Hey guys, this is Darren with Creativity Unleashed, and in this video, I was wanting to check out the Harbor Freight welding electrodes and see how well they perform, see how well they do compared to some of the other ones. We're not going to compare them, we're just going to be running them and finding out how well they do. I'm a certified structural and pipe welder, and we're also going to be doing the review of this amazing Everlast 200 STI, which is basically just a stick welder. It will do lift TIG but I'll come over here and show you the functions it has, but it's a very, very high quality stick welder. Or right, here's the functions you have. Your 6010 on off. Here is your amperage, is your first light, and you can either just turn the amps one by one, or you can push in and move through them very quickly, all the way up to 200. And then you have your hot start, and you can set the amount of percentage that, um, you want your hot start up to 100% and then you have your hot start time which you can go from zero all the way to two seconds as well as right here we've got the arc force which goes up to 100 which is like the dig so if you're getting your electrode closer to the base metal um, it senses that the voltage is dropping and so it raises the amperage and that's especially useful when you're doing open route with 6010 it also does have lift TIG, but it's very basic. I'm sure it'd do great on pipe and stuff for just doing lift TIG welding on heavy wall pipe. All right, so let's get into the electrodes we have right here. So we're going to be running this Harbor Freight 6013, and it recommends from 100 to 135. When I run at 135, it seems a little bit too hot. So I'm going to be running 110, and we've got a um, 3 8 plate here just to fill it well and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so that's went in there pretty well. It's a little bit more of an aggressive 60 um, 13 than I've been a lot of times seen. So one of the first things I noticed <laughs> For a 6013, the slag really doesn't want to come off very easily. It's like glued on there. I'm like whapping on it good. And yeah, it doesn't want to come off very well. And that's... So anyway, I turned the amperage down to amps, so it's at 100 amps right now, and we'll see if that helps the slag come off any better. So there's not as much spatter and it seems like it's finally coming off better. Alright, so we'll run the third pass on this and see how it looks. All right, well that's decently normal for a 6013. So let's move on. So we're gonna try out the 6011 right now. And these recommend from 60 to 120 amps. It's quite a amperage variation. I'm running at 95 amps here. And just another fillet weld here and three eighths. Let's see how it does. Now with the 6011, you're going to do a little bit of whip and pause. It's not just a drag electro because it's a little bit fast freezing a higher penetrating electrode. Alright, wow, that had a pretty good aggressive arc, very good and hot. Um, we'll see how it looks to be. And yes, it does look like a very um, good 6011 bead nice and sharp as expected now let's put in another two passes and see how it does very very harsh erratic um, harsh arc there um, very good penetration at the end it's hard to fill in I kind of burn out a little bit the corner of it that's pretty much my fault I'd say it's a little bit too hot on the metal plate it's getting pretty hot so 
to normal. I will drop the amperage for the last pass to especially avoid undercut on the top. So I'll run that at like 70 amps, I think. So there's the 6011 final feeds. That looked pretty good. Seems like it all went in there right well, so not bad at all. Pretty impressed. All right, we're running the 8th inch 7018, and we're going to be running that at 115 amps. It recommends from 90 to 160. You can always tell more about an electrode on the low spectrum of the amperage. You can tell how well it actually is running. Flag's coming right off nicely. It's always a good sign. Yeah, really nice bead. All right, let's put on another two fills and we'll see how it looks. But you can see the bead is just coming right up nicely. Oh yeah, lifted right off. Check that out. Not too bad, that's what you like to see. Alright, I definitely, not too bad, but I definitely can say I think I've ran a lot easier to run 7018. As you can see, makes a really good Nice looking well be. Alright, so this is a 530 second with this Everlast running at 200 amps at its full power and let's see how it does. The amount of like spatter here shows that the rod's too hot and the casing here actually says that it can go to 210. I'm running at 200 amps, and it's definitely like over too much for it. But I guess they're putting the extremes on there. So you can see it's a decent looking bead that was really hot. So um, I'll turn it down here. 170, let's just say. You can see that's a lot more controllable. And that's a, a lot better looking bead there. All right, so let me give you my opinion on the welding rods. Um, I think the Harbor Freight welding electrodes will get most jobs done. Um, they're decent. But um, I definitely have to say they weren't my preferred rod. I definitely prefer some of the other brands. And some of that comes with just, you know, you develop things you like and don't like about rods and companies and, you know, one person will be like, this is the very best, another person will say the other. I'd have to say they're not my favorite. They're, they're all right. They'll probably get the job done. One of my favorites over here would be the Washington Alloy Premium Electrodes. Um, all the ones I've tried that they make, all their 6010, 7018s, all the 6013, the 6011, all of them I'd seen are one of my favorites. They, they do an incredible job, I think. Um, Hobart also makes decent rods, but I'd have to say I prefer this brand. Um, and then as far as the machine, for a stick welder, it has like all the features a stick welder could want. I mean, you got 110, 220, you've got um, all the adjustments for hot start and arc force, 6010, you know, all of that in a, you know, pretty small package. And um, yeah, so if you need just a stick welder, it's a great option. Now, obviously, you want a multi-process unit, um, you might want to pay a bit more and get that while you're at it so you don't have to have separate units, but depending on what you're doing. So, um, but this would definitely take the place of probably any stick welder you have and do just as good, if not a lot better. So, yeah, I hope you found this video helpful.